Praise God. All right, let us pray together. I, I, I need to pray and ask God to help me on this word here, and then we'll get into the Bible study tonight. Amen. Father, thank you for your wonderful presence that's here. Thank you for a spirit of consecration that's upon the church. We, we do feel your strength tonight in this, in this endeavor, Lord, and we thank you for that. I ask you, Lord, to clear my mind, and I, I pray, Holy Ghost, anoint me to teach your word. Let it be a rhema word. Don't let it just be a letter, but a rhema word of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To speak to the heart of this church. Help us to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let the word come alive to us tonight. Lord, we ask these in, through the power of the name of Jesus. And everyone say amen. Praise God. The scripture teaches us that the church is the body of Christ in the earth. And how many of you have ever heard that, that the church is the body of Christ in the earth? As in, can I get a witness, anyone? It's most, almost everybody. Um, I'm going to assume everybody has heard that, that the church is the body of Christ in the earth. And I, I want you to think about that statement. I, I, I believe that's true. I'm going to give you a few scriptures that we, we get that from. But I want you to think about that for a moment that the church is the body of Christ in the earth. I want you to think about that for a moment. Uh, and and I, I don't say this in a condemning way. I just uh, uh, say it in a moment of reflection of how many people really treat the church that way, that have the attitude towards the church that this is the body of Christ in the earth. I mean, when I think about that statement, to, to me what that is saying is that when I honor the church, I'm honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? That when, when, I, when, to me, that statement that the church is the body of Christ in the earth, that's, to me, it's, it's making the statement that when, when I treat the church as something sacred, then what I'm doing is that I am, in fact, showing that Jesus is sacred in my life. To me, that's that, that uh, I mean, when, you, when, you, when we declare that the church is the body of Christ in the earth, I mean, to me, how I treat the church is really a reflection on how I feel about the Lord. Can I get a witness on that? And here's the deal, because <laughs> this is big, because you got a lot of people who believe that they can love Jesus without loving the church. And, and I'm, not, I'm not here to dispute you on that. I, I'm not here to try to, I'm, I, I do want to provoke your thought for a moment because there's a lot of people who believe that they can serve the Lord without serving the church, that the church doesn't mean that much. But it, when we look at the Word of God tonight on, on several, on several uh, uh, issues in scriptures, that the church is very valuable. It's important. I mean, Jesus died for the church to be here. Uh, hello. And if, if the church is his body, amen, to, so that tells me that if I serve the church I, and, and I honor the church, I'm honoring Jesus. I'm honoring his body. I'm honoring who he is. Someone say amen to that. Well, let me give you a couple of scriptures that deal with the church being the body of Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. You can write these down if you don't mind um, and look at them later. Let me just read them to you. Uh, Colossians 1.18 says that Jesus is the head of the body, the church. Jesus is the head of the body, <clears throat> the church. And so if you got a head, you got to have a body. And it clearly says in Colossians that his body is the church, and the church is in the earth. Colossians 1.24, um, Paul was talking about his suffering that he went through. And he said, I do this for his body's sake. In other words, he said, I'm, do, I'm suffering for the church. But here's what Paul said. He said, I'm suffering for his body's sake, which is the church. Paul said that everything that I'm going through, my mind understands, my heart understands that I'm doing this. He said, I'm doing it for the church. But I'm not doing it for the people. I'm doing it for the body of Christ. 
And you and I and, and, and the people that's in the church, we represent the body of Christ. Or, does that make sense? In Ephesians, it makes this statement. Instead, um, who is the head of his body, the church. That's Ephesians 4.15. Who is the head of his body, the church. 1 Corinthians, one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 12.13 says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Now, pull up for a moment. These denominations that are in our world today, those are man-made. I mean, in, 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 I, I thank God for the Pentecostal experience, but there was no Pentecostal organization in the beginning. There was no Baptist, no Methodist. The organizations are man-made. And many of it, many of it, many of it was created to divide people from each other. Uh, can I get a witness? But when you look at the Scripture, there is one body, which is Christ, and we are all baptized into that one body by one spirit. Now, now, I don't care if you want to wear a certain label. That's the reason when people ask, well, what denomination are you guys? Man, I hate to talk about that stuff. I tell them, come and experience the Lord. Come and, because if you put the denomination out there, you automatically turn them off. They say, oh, that's such and such. No, no, listen, forget all that man-made stuff. You come on in here and see if you don't feel the presence of the Lord. Because that's what's important. Can I get a witness on that? So there's one body, Jesus is the head of that body. So I want to come back to the statement that when I honor the church, I'm honoring Jesus. I, I want you to see that, that when I treat the church as something sacred, I'm in fact showing that Jesus is sacred in my life. Because I want us, and, and I say us, I, you know, I, we, we don't have an issue here. I'm just teaching. But I do want it to be put down deep in our heart that this is not just a gathering. This is not just a fellowship. This is not, the, this is not some kind of club where we all just kind of gather around and we just kind of go. No, we are in the body of Christ tonight. We are, we are the church of the living God. And I'm not... I'm not talking about the building because they take this building. We can meet over there in Jones Park, begin to sing the songs of Zion and lift up the name of Jesus. And the same anointing that we feel right here, we'll feel out there in Jones Park. Someone say amen to that. But I want you to understand. I want you to see that, that, that when you serve the church and when you give to the church, man, we're giving. This is about Jesus. We're giving to Jesus. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 1, let me draw your attention there. Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. Uh, this is Saul before he becomes the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul's name before his conversion was Saul. And it says, And Saul was yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. And he went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, in other words, if he found any Christians, whether they were men or women, whew, that brother's full of hate, wasn't he? He might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And Saul fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So here he is. He's on the road to Damascus. He had letters in hand to throw Christians into, into prison or bring them back to, to, to Jerusalem. And as he's on the road, he sees a bright light, and all of a sudden he hears this voice, and it says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So I, well, I want to know, who's the voice? Who's speaking to him? And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now, you take that for a moment. Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus. Jesus has already been dead. Buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. Jesus is in heaven right now. And yet Jesus, when he, he, he deals with Saul here, he's telling him, he said that you are persecuting me. Well, in actuality, Saul was persecuting the church. 
But Jesus made the statement, when you persecute the church, you're persecuting me, you're persecuting my body, because the church is my body in the earth. So, how many of you see that with Pastor Now You see that? So, look at this. If we can take this from a, from a negative standpoint, a negative standpoint, why can't we take it from the positive? The negative is that if you persecute the church, you're persecuting Jesus. Hello? And we're all in agreement with that. Well, let's, let's, can we flip the coin and take it from a, a positive point? That if you bless the church, you're blessing Jesus? I mean, if we can, if we can all be in agreement on the negative part that, oh, you, you, you come against the church, you coming against Jesus, then why can't you flip that and say, hey, if I bless the church, I'm blessing Jesus. If I serve the church, I'm serving Jesus. Huh? If I honor the church, I'm honoring the Lord Jesus. Can, 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 we, can, we, can we flip it like that? I don't, I don't think that's twisting scripture, and I don't think that's out of alignment. Because this is his body in the earth. And when we serve this or when we honor this, what, we, what are we doing? We're honoring Jesus, man. We're not honoring a man. We're not honoring a, a group of people. We're not honoring a nationality. We're honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to let, here's the key. Watch this. My commitment to Jesus is reflected in my commitment to the church. I'm going to just let that marinate for a moment because I know that's contrary, not in here, but that's contrary to the spirit of this hour. Because people believe they can have a commitment to Jesus and not be committed to the church. And I'm just telling you, it, from a pastor's standpoint, I have never seen anyone who was not committed to the church make it. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Now, they, they may believe that they can and that's between them and the Lord but people who get cold on the church they get cold on the Lord and people who get on fire for the Lord get on fire for the church my commitment and faithfulness to the church is a reflection of my commitment to Jesus and I really feel that that I feel that and you may not feel that and you can work that out on your own but for me when 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 I just miss or when I just when I take the church lightly man there's something going on in my spirit and, and I just for me for pastor I think besides God's mercy what has kept me all these years is that I felt that my commitment to the church reflected my commitment to Jesus and I didn't want it let, let me say it this way if Jesus was going to be first in my life I showed that by allowing the church to be first in my life Come on, can I get a witness in the house tonight? Hmm? I'm just telling you, people who put the church first in their life, I believe they're putting Jesus first in their life. The value of the church. Jesus made this statement in Matthew 16, I will build my church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. What happened between Matthew chapter 16 and Acts chapter 2? Because in Matthew 16, Jesus said, I'm going to, I'm going to build it. And in Acts chapter 2, he's adding to the church. That means it's already established. What happened? Are you ready? Jesus died. He was buried, rose again, ascended into heaven. Acts chapter 2, God poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those things are the things that purchased the church. His blood purchased the church. And not only did his blood purchase the church, his spirit birthed the church. Hello? And so when we talk about the church, you say, well, I don't think I need the church. And I think I can have a relationship with you. I'm going to do my own thing. You do the church thing. You don't understand. Jesus died on the cross to build his church. 
He shed his blood that you and I could be a part of what we're a part of tonight. And once again, I'm not talking about the building, but he said, where two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There is something supernatural in this house tonight, not because we're a club, not because we're a little uh, few people getting together. Oh, no, we're the church of the living God that gets together underneath the banner of Jesus Christ and his shed blood and his spirit and his anointing is in this house. Someone say amen to that. So please don't let the spirit get on you or don't let that ideal get on you that says, well, the church really don't mean anything. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you as your pastor, amen, you need the church. You need faithfulness to the house of God. We got to assemble, assemble together. We got to be here. This is essential. This is important. Oh, someone say amen to that. Praise God. Praise God. He said that we were redeemed. Not with gold and silver and corruptible things. Amen. But we was redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We was redeemed with the blood of the Lamb. Hello, somebody. Jesus shed his blood for this tonight. And once again, I'm not talking about brick and mortar. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the people. So please don't let something get on you that says, well, I really, well, me and Jesus are going to do our thing and you do the church thing. Oh, no. If you do the Jesus thing, you got to do the church thing. Why? Because he built this. He, he shed his blood for this. <laughs> Someone say amen. I think, you know, the, the thing that I feel that God wants us to see tonight and, you know, the, the thing that, you know, just kept echoing in my spirit is that we need to understand that, that when we, we serve the church and the things that we're doing here, that we're, we're serving Christ in that. We're, we're serving the Lord in that. We're, we're not serving people. Uh, we're, we're not serving each other. And you say, well, Brother Paul, we, we are serving each other. No. I'm serving Jesus. Now, I, I, may, I may bless you and I may do something good for you, but in my heart, I'm, I'm serving the Lord Jesus. And what, got, what I think has got to happen in your heart for there to be joy in this and peace in this is that you've got to be doing this for Jesus. You got to be so you say, well, Brother Parr, I'm working in the church and I'm doing this and I'm doing that or or I'm coming or I, whatever you want to say. But in your heart, you got to be saying, man, I'm serving the Lord Jesus in this. I'm doing this for the Lord. Amen. When I serve the people, I'm not serving. The, I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will never really have joy and peace in your life until you become a servant. Man, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to be in trouble if you start keeping a book of every time someone doesn't do what you think they should do. Or, I, you know, pastor didn't call me, or the church didn't do something. Or the, you, you know what you're looking at? You're looking at whether they served you. Listen, you're going to be miserable you got to forget about people serving you. And you got to ask the question, how can I serve better? Because when you get a servant spirit on you, there is joy. There is peace. And let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. If you're trying to serve people, oh, you're going to be miserable. Because <laughs> you're going to love them and they're going to stab you in the back. You're going to give your heart and then they're going to trample on it. But when you do it for Jesus, you're not even looking at their response. I don't care what you do. Amen. I'm doing this for the Lord Jesus. I'm serving Jesus in this. <laughs> Woo! Someone say amen. I promise you, I, I, that, that has set me free as a pastor. You have no idea how angry I would get <laughs> when you do your best and your best wasn't good enough. I mean, 
gave them a dryer, gave them a refrigerator, gave them a car. And then four weeks later, they didn't like the church. And the words of my wife were, they liked the car, didn't they? I mean, I get bitter, you know. I mean, you're calling, you're, you're doing, you know, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, and then it ain't good enough. And, and you say, well, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And oh, there's times I wanted to quit. Times I got bitter and angry and just, you have no idea the personal battles I went through. And then the Lord brought me to this revelation that everything I do for the Lord I'm doing it for him and, and forget the response of the people. It don't matter what happens with that. You just serve, listen, love, listen, serve Jesus by loving people. Serve the Lord by doing good for people. Serve the Lord by loving the church. Minister to the people. Bless the people, but do it for Jesus. Don't do it for the people because you don't know what, listen, people crazy. You don't know what they're going to do. So listen, whatever you're doing, whatever, whatever ministry you have, please do that for the Lord. Serve Jesus in that. And then if, if, they, if they spit on you, they stab you, don't worry about that. God take care of that. But you'll never lose your reward. Why? Because I was doing this for the Lord. We had a gentleman that, I say gentleman, we had an individual. That way you don't know if it's a gentleman or not. So we had an individual that we were really sacrificing for. And, and uh, long story short, they quit coming. And um, in, in the old days, I'd have got bitter. Because the first thing, you know, think about it, all the sacrifices, all the things, all the things. And do you know, in my heart, I was cool with that. Because here's what I said. I am so thankful for the opportunity to serve Jesus in that season. That person gave me an opportunity to serve Jesus. Because when I give a drink of water or we give a sock or we give a sandwich or we give a ride or we give a handshake or we give a word of encouragement, you've given me an opportunity to serve Jesus. And maybe the season didn't go as long as I wanted it to. But whether it's an hour, a week, a month, six months, a year, whatever, I thank God for the opportunity that I had to serve Jesus. Come on, can I get a witness? So let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. You're not serving pastor. You're not serving people. No. Mm -mm. You're serving the Lord. Serve the Lord in that ministry. Hello, somebody. Everything you do, serve Jesus in it. You give somebody a ride, you do a good to what? Serve Jesus in that. Oh, glory to God. Can I get a witness? Now, let me. <laughs> I got this. I'm going to move. I'm not going to say this. I had it in my notes. I'm not going to mention it. Because I, I got it in bold black font with a line under it. It's, I'm going to read it. It says, serving people will make you bitter. Serving people will make you bitter. It will. Because you give and they don't give back what you gave. But if you serve the Lord and you look at it as an, as an opportunity to serve Jesus, oh, what joy and peace and happiness. Hallelujah. And the Word said, He will not forgive. Get your labor of love. Everything you do for Jesus. Oh. Come on, can I can I, can somebody give me a witness and give God some praise? Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone say amen to that. Now, let me give you this, and, and I'm going to try to land this bad boy. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 35. You guys know this famous portion of scripture but let me just read it to you Jesus said for I was hungry and you gave me meat 
I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall they say on that day, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we ever see you as a stranger and take you in or naked and give you clothes? They said, Lord, when, when did we do this to you? And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Whew. So listen. When you're kind to pastor, you're not being kind to pastor, you're being kind to Jesus. Hello? So show your kindness to the Lord by being kind to one another. Because what we do, we get looking at the people and then we say, well, they're not worthy or they're this or that. Listen, forget all that garbage. If you do that, you'll never help nobody. You got you to gotta find an opportunity everywhere you can to simply love people. You say, well, I, I'm loving Jesus in that. I'm, I'm loving the Lord. Jesus is naked and I'm clothing him. He's thirsty and I, I'm going to find somebody and give him a drink. I'm going to give him a ride. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to encourage him. And, and on that day, he's going to say, I've done it unto him because I've done it unto the brethren. I've done it unto the least of these. Come on. I, we're doing it unto the Lord. Doing it unto Jesus. Amen. Wouldn't you do it for the Lord? Huh? Wouldn't you do it for the Lord? Be a giver. Love people. Love children. L li listen, lo love the ones that God's given us. Don't be bitter. Don't be critical. Don't be selfish. Don't be self-centered. You're going to be miserable like that. Be a servant. How can I help? How can I be a blessing? Come on, let me, let me demonstrate the love of Jesus. Let me demonstrate the goodness of God. Let me demonstrate the mercy of God. Let somebody see Jesus in us. Let them see Jesus in this church. Oh, oh, oh. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Somebody say glory. Come on, give him a shout of praise. I'm... told this story before but old missionary gave his whole life to the work of God and he's coming off the mission field and spent all of his youth all of his strength on the mission field coming home he's on the boat with all these military men that was coming off leave from the military and when they pulled up there to the harbor man there was a big band out there and and a parade and they was Shouting about these men that served in the military and there was nobody there to even pick up that little missionary Not one person there He went to his hotel room and he got down. And he was so broken-hearted He told the Lord he said Lord all these men they served in the military and they had a big parade and big big celebration and He said I gave my whole life for you There was not one person even to pick me up when I got home Not one party nothing going on and the Lord spoke to him and said, son, you're not home yet. You're not home yet. Come on, you're not home yet. We got a payday coming. We got a payday coming. Amen. It might not be right here. We got a payday coming. Our reward's coming. When we get home, there's going to be a celebration. God will not forget your labor of love. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's serve the Lord with joy tonight. Let's serve in the church with joy tonight. Come on, can I get a witness? You say, Brother Parr, and I know this ain't the case. I know this is not the case. This is a parable Probably a bad parable, but I'm going to use it anyway. Sister Samantha says, man, Pastor, them kids drive me crazy. That ain't the case. She loves those kids back there. She loves them. She's got to love them to do it as often as she does and, and still love the church. Hello. 
She got to love them kids. So, oh, Pastor, them kids drive me crazy. Lost my joy. I don't even want to be back there. Well, what would be the answer for a situation like that? To quit looking at the kids and start looking at Jesus? Do it for Jesus. Love them kids for Jesus. And I know she is and she's doing a wonderful job. I'm using it as an example. But do it for the Lord. Come on, workers. Do it for the Lord. Come on, givers. Do it for the Lord. Come on, singers. Sing for the Lord. Sing that song to the Lord. Come on, pastor. Serve the Lord Jesus. Find joy in serving. Find happiness in serving. Come on. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, hallelujah. I'm finished. I'm finished. I want this to be my chief joy. I want this to be my chief joy. To be able to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I want it to be my chief joy. Can you lift your heart to the Lord tonight? Oh, thank you, Lord. Everything we do, let us do it for you. Let us serve you in it, Jesus. Oh, God, let us love the women of this church because we're loving Jesus. Let's love Jesus through these women. Come on. Let's love Jesus through these men. Let's love Jesus through these young people. Come on, come on, church. Let's love Jesus. Oh, oh, I hear the Holy Ghost. He said, how can you say you love God and hate the ones that's made in His image? Come on, how can you say you love God and you hate the very ones made in His image? Oh, no. If you love God, you're going to love those that's in His image. You're going to love your brother and you're going to love the church. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Come on, somebody worship. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. I'm, I'm through, but I do feel the Holy Ghost right here. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. You know what needs to change? It's the motive behind it. It's the motive behind it. You get the motive right, there's joy in it. You get the motive right, there's peace in it. You get the motive right. Get the, get the motive right. It's about Jesus. It's about serving Him. It's about clothing Him. It's about, oh yeah, it's about giving Him a word of encouragement. Oh yeah, it's about the Lord Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about the Lord Jesus. Oh, it's about the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, listen, I, I, I got to quit. Um, it's 8 o'clock. How many of you would come around the front with Pastor real quick? Everyone in the building, please just come around real quick here if you don't mind. Just real quick and, and then I'll pray and get you out of here. I want to honor your time. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> Are you ready? You say, Pastor. I just can't love them because they irritate me. I just, I can't be, because they, I tell you, they. You know what we need to do in a situation like that? We need to ask God to fill us with his love. Because I can't do this in me. Because, Lord, it irritates me. It aggravates me. I, I just, it, I get turned sideways on that. But, Lord, if you'll fill me with your love, I can love them through you. I can, I can love them through you, Lord. I can, I can do it for you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Now, and I'm not, I'm not being critical here. I'm not, I'm not, I prob I'm not trying to just pick on you tonight. But I'm telling you, we need the love of God in us tonight. I'm telling you, it will take us to the next level as a church to serve Jesus and to serve one another. We got to have the love of God in us. We got to don't don't please don't say, well, that's just how I am. No, that's that might be how you are, but that's not how Jesus is. That's not how Jesus is, and we got to reflect Him. Come on, we got to reflect the Lord. 
How many of you will lift your heart to the Lord here? Just, just come on. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. They say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with the love of God. Help me, Lord, to reflect you. Help me to serve you. Help, oh, I just want to demonstrate the love of God. I want to demonstrate the mercy of God. Come on, somebody. Will you help me pray just for a moment? Fill me, Lord. Fill me with you. Fill, that's all you got to pray. Fill me with you, Jesus. Please fill my heart. Fill my mind with you, Lord. Fill me with you. Fill me with that wonderful Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Spirit, Lord. Oh, God, fill me with your Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit. Feel me, Lord. Feel me. Come on, church. Feel us, Lord. Feel us with that Holy Ghost. Feel us with that Holy Ghost. Feel us with that love, Lord. Feel us with the love of God. Feel us with the love of God. Come on, just 15 more seconds. Feel us with the love of God. Feel us with the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I really want to someone say amen to that. Maybe the next 39 days now we can make that a matter of prayer. Is that Lord? I really want to serve you in joy. I want to serve the church and I want to serve people. And I, man, I, everywhere I go, I just want to serve Jesus. I want to serve the Lord. I want to open the door for people because I want to serve Jesus. I want to serve Jesus because I want to let someone. I got a buggy of groceries, and the person behind me only got a couple of items. I want to serve Jesus and let them go on in front of them. Go ahead and go on. You know what a privilege. I want to serve Jesus because I see a couple over there eating. I say I want I want their bill too. I want to pay their bill. I want to. I want to serve uh, everywhere I'll go. I want to serve Jesus. I want to serve the You know what a privilege for God to call people. Well, I can't. Let, let me speak for me. For God to call someone like me to carry his name and to be able to serve him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because I didn't deserve that. Hello, somebody. But I'm so thankful to be able to serve the Lord Jesus. One more time. Can you just lift your hands and love the Lord? I'm through. I, I, I'm finished. I'm finished. Just love the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Who someone say amen.